Hello everyone, this is a speedrun of Resident Evil 7. It is any percent Madhouse new game. Hey baby, I just wanted to send a quick hello. This uh, opening cutscene is oh, completely unskippable, by the way. I'm gonna be coming home soon. Yay! The final time is one hour, 43 minutes, and 21 seconds. I cannot wait to be done with this babysitting job and come home to my loving husband. I miss you. You can get away with pretty much the uh, I got entire you. gist of the story I love you, Ethan. I miss in watching you so one speedrun, I think. Of kisses. Bye, baby. But anyways, this whole sequence here is a little bit of a flashback. You know how it works. I think what I might do if uh, there's not much else to commentate on is I might talk a little bit about the story and try to like bridge some of the gaps here. You were right. This is also a uh, submission for have... Awesome Games Done Quick 2017. All I can say is that if you get this, stay away. I finished this run in January of 2017. No, not January of 2017. I'd say more like February or March. Yeah, that's about when I was doing these runs full swing. Hey, it's, uh, it's Ethan. Oh, hey. But, uh, sub-140, right. definitely doable. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's Mia. She's not dead, she's alive. She, she's back. They found her? How? What happened? So we start off with the protagonist know. calling some random-ass dude. I don't know how, but she's back. She's back somehow. Maybe some random prank. butt dude, excuse me. She wants me to come and get her. Where is she? Dolby. Dolby, Louisiana. I know, I know, but what if it is her? I have to find out what happened. Oh, did I mean 2018? Oh, dang. No, 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 no. Awesome Games Done Quick 2018. There we go. Thank you, chat. Any in. So this is, uh... The intro section of the game here. The game's prologue chapter. basically just uh, running in straight lines. Ignore the big house on the bayou in front of us. I'm not actually sure if uh, moving diagonally makes you go faster, or makes you go as fast as running straight forward, but I just sort of premeditated anyway. I think it does. I'm not too terribly sure. But uh, every time that I've tried different forms of movement, they've all come out to very similar times. I should also mention that uh, this commentary is being done on the PC version of the game. At GDQ, I will actually be trying to get a hold of a uh, less grotesque version of the game that actually censors all of the uh, all of the dismemberment sequences and such. Really, the only uh, dismemberment that you actually see is uh, Ethan's hand being removed. Actually, no, that's a lie. Start by pulling this chain, going through this door, this hidden door. There's really not much to the sequence leading up to Mia. 
There is one uh, pretty decent time saver here, which would otherwise force us into an automatic cutscene. Well, not really much of a cutscene, just like... It would just like sort of force our perspective and we'd get knocked into the water. But in order to avoid it, what we do is uh, <clears throat> we just uh, look at this wall here and strafe. And uh, there's a dead body popped up behind us. Don't gotta worry about that too terribly much anymore. We'll grab the bolt cutters. Mia? Bit of quick menuing work. I think it's actually faster to use the uh, keyboard. Faster and more accurate to just remember some well, quick keyboard you. macros. It's me. It's Ethan. Ethan? Ethan? Are you all right? To be able to get to the correct slot to use you the you items know? instead of using the mouse. You, you could use the mouse. No, no, I wouldn't. But in general, it's not recommended. Did anyone see you? Did he see you? Hey, who else is here? What the hell's going on? Daddy's coming. We need to go. Daddy? We need to go now! So Mia's been brainwashed exactly enough to refer to Jack as Daddy. Where are you taking me? Someplace safe. I rearranged my inventory during this sequence to, uh, Baby, put the fuse into three the years. left item slot whenever I actually pick Has it up. It really been three years? Because then my cursor will be on item slot one, and that's actually going to help me out quite a bit later. <laughs> Knowing where your cursor is going to be is, uh. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I kind of got bored. What they do to you? Not now. We need to get out of here first. I think it's this way. Because, yeah, you actually do have to wait for quite a long time before you can actually progress with the game. I suppose I would normally have donations. Uh. Mia, we have to read around this time. The message you sent me. Not me. That wasn't me. But you did. I didn't. Okay, fine. Just tell me what's going on. I'm telling you everything that I know. We have to go this way. Mia, are you sure you know where you're going? The family used to bring me food through here. I remember. Have to bear with me, by the way. It's uh, been a while since the last time I ran this, so it's kind of a refresher course for me trying to remember where, where to go from point A to point B. There. It's there. But we're just trying to wait for the animation where Mia sits it's on the couch. It does take a pretty long time. So, uh, New Game Madhouse, on PC, the game runs at, uh, uncapped frame rate. And it actually makes for some pretty unintended side effects, like getting multiple hits off on melee weapons. But also, that means that enemies can do the same to you, so... By default, that actually makes New Game Madhouse on PC a lot harder than New Game Madhouse on console. So I'm just staring at that, uh, column and uh, looking to the right over and over and over again because I actually have no idea what uh, triggers Mia to uh, run, out, run out the door there. The event triggers in this game are really weird, but I know that if I cross into this room here and turn the other way, then it will actually uh, trigger the knocking sequence and then Mia will immediately go berserk. Ah! 
You actually don't have to do anything in this section here. It's actually faster to just not press anything. I also run straight towards her. I actually don't know if that actually saves any time or not. Because you wind up in always the exact same spot at the end of this. But I think that gets her to start stabbing you sooner. I really, I really, really wish that I could have skipped this dialogue. Leave me alone. I've been back. I deserve this. Because there are actually a lot of really cool strategies in this run. It just kind of takes a while to actually get to the meat and potatoes of the game. So you have to go in here and uh, start healing, basically. And then you have to stay in this room until a certain amount of time has elapsed. I usually look at the shadow on the wall to uh, cue myself in on uh, when I can actually leave and start hovering over Mia's corpse in order to trigger this here. And we're going to grab this axe and what I'm going to do is one, two, three, five, six, seven. I basically just try to avoid hits and try to avoid getting grabbed. But if you hit guard while you are uh, getting grabbed, then it will actually immediately uh, trigger Ethan delivering the final blow during this fight. But in general, you should try to be hovering around Mia's back as much as possible. So I line the lower part of the camera to the bottom of the shelf there, and I just like kind of line myself up diagonally here. I think that might be the fastest way to trigger the phone. Maybe they shouldn't have come here. Who's this? And what the fuck is going on? My name's Zoe. There should be a this is also my first attic. split. Attic. Where Go there. Now. Ethan picks up the phone. The sound effect where Ethan picks up the phone. I usually like to split on sound effects instead of like visual cues. It works out better for me. So, with Mia dying there, that also puts the axe in a favorable position. So we actually save a bit of time on that by default. Our item cursor should have been on slot... Six? Yeah, slot six. Right over the... Uh, right over the uh, bolt cutter, then we grab the fuse, and then it's FAF to put down the fuse. And running diagonally to trigger this as quickly as possible. I say diagonally to do it as quickly as possible because I'm already holding diagonally, so if I tried to hold W, then I'm not actually sure if it would be, if it would result in a straighter line. Also, there's no point in struggling here, because it's going to happen anyway. The thing, the thing that we have been waiting for. Also, you take literally no damage during this cutscene. There won't be any blood marks after the cutscene. Ethan will be perfectly fine. It doesn't result in an automatic heal. You still retain the same number of hit points, but the player actually does not take damage during this. I usually go diagonally up here, but there's that pipe on the floor. So, sometimes I don't. Pick up the uh, healing item, then the okay. terrible seven-shot handgun. Personally, I hate it when handguns fire really slow. And uh, we're going to climb up here in order to get Mia to kind of sort of spawn. Then we're just going to open this door, grab the first aid med, switch to the axe. And this is 
the first uh, glitch that we're going to use. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our hitbox, ready our uh, alt fire, and uh, then just do like a vertical slash. And the higher your frame rate, the more hits it'll do. So if executed correctly, then it'll actually save you one clip of ammo. The other trick that I use is I consistently ADS, like I consistently hit aim down sight, and then I stop aiming down the sight. Like I alternate shots between aiming down sight and not aiming down sight. And then it actually uh, does a lot of damage, especially while she's chainsawing through the wall because there's a very small window where she will not damage you. And uh, if done correctly, that is how you beat Mia very, very easily on Madhouse. I'm just going to keep strafing left and right until... Until Jack does the thing. Welcome to the family, son. So right about here is a uh, nice three minute long cutscene. Come on. Don't you die on us now. You have work to do. Ethan gets his hand stapled back on. So a little bit of background, people are wondering, well wait, how does Ethan get his hand stapled back on and why does it suddenly start working again? That shouldn't happen. And the answer is because of the uh, of the mold, because at this point in the game, Ethan is Where? already Where infected by the mold, and it could have happened any number of places in the. Uh, it could have happened any number of places in the uh, early section of the game. Either when Ethan waded through the water, or when he got his hand chopped off, like his hand could have made contact with the mold or something. Or he could have gotten infected here when uh, he had the piece of infected human flesh shoved into his mouth. I actually like how how disgusting this game is. It is just the appropriate amount of grotesque. It makes me... Uh, Wince, for lack of a better word. That second cut was actually to Ethan's cheek. You can actually see it later in the game. Because Ethan is, uh... Like you, like you think he just like cut out a, he cut out like Ethan's tooth or something like that. I mean, it certainly sounded sharp enough, but that actually was not the case. I assure you. Like the angle would, the angle would make you think he went for the mouth, but it actually doesn't. Okay, so now that we gain control of Ethan again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that door over there, and uh, we're going to move against the wall, and then when Jack turns towards us, I actually really messed this up, but I was supposed to crouch under it. Also, I think that it was uh, way, way, way too risky for me to uh, do the early... for me to do the early uh, trying to unlock the door thing, which will actually... Uh, make the cops show up sooner, but I did it this way for safety reasons. That is actually going to be my marathon safety strat. I'm just going to go straight for the hatch and hide so that we can just open the hatch. If we, uh, if Jack sees us try to open the hatch, then another cutscene will play where Ethan has his foot dismembered.
gonna grab the gunpowder so that we can mix it together with uh, ammunition later. Then we're going to grab the uh, yellow chemical and the green chemical for health. Because we're going to need to heal ourselves uh, immediately after the jack fight coming up. Any lower than 25% uh, health, and Ethan will be in danger status, which means he will move a lot slower. There is a danger status in this game. So I lost maybe about, uh, I don't know, about 10 seconds off of this. But all you have to do is like open that and then exit, and then when you head back around the corner here, The police officer will show up. I actually forget his official name. Hey, over here. Hey. Hey, over here. Deputy. Hey, you... Not officer. Deputy. Hey, I'm sorry. Hold on, back up. Now, sir, do you live here? I mean, is this your property? What? Me? No. No. All right. Now, we got several calls about some missing persons late. You don't understand. I gotta get out of here. Now, calm down. You're not listening to me. There are crazy people in this house trying to fucking kill me. <laughs> well, all right. Let me tell you this. You don't exactly seem like you're playing with a full deck yourself, all right? Are you kidding me? Look, like I said... During this section, I would ask to and I can't have donations read, that naturally. Like yourself may not be involved. Right. But basically, a lot of I'll stuff happens, and usually the order in which I do I things... Now. Predicates the order that things are going to, going to be in my inventory. You gotta give me your gun. I actually like RE7 a lot because it's the closest thing that Capcom has made to a classic Resident Evil game in years, while still retaining some of the more action-based elements from like Resident Evil 4 onward. It was a somewhat confusing direction. Here. For Capcom to take, hey. but to me it made sense. Now go garage now. I actually like the game in VR a lot. I'm not do with a knife. <gasps> Sometime later, I'll need to make sure that I record. Or run in VR. Now first you need to tell me what you're doing out here alone in the middle of the night. Me? What about you? you know, it's my job. Won't you do your job and tell me? Answer my questions. You're not gonna believe me if I told you. Try. Hey, put that door down. Put that door down. Wait! Wait. So for the jack fight here, we'll grab the gun. Open the locker, grab the lock pick. And uh, doing so should actually put our cursor in the right place to just go ahead and use the lockpick. We actually want the car key because it is the fastest way to progress the fight on Madhouse. And we're going to get in the car and try to get out. And we succeeded. And actually we had full iframes there. So once you get out of the car and if Jack doesn't grab you and, you know, combo you or whatever, then he'll get in the car and try to start driving around. Then we're going to mag dump him. Oh yeah, also you'll notice that I took out the tires earlier. Doing so actually makes it so that you have to fire fewer rounds at Jack. Then we're going to get rid of the car key, and we're going to mix up enhanced handgun bullets, and also mix up another uh, health drink. Oh boy. Now look what you've done, motherfucker. We're just going to use these uh, one bullets, two bullets, and just one bullet. That was enough. When he spins you around like that, you didn't take any damage, but I think we just like barely interrupted him from uh, causing damage to us. So we didn't actually have to use a uh, health drink. Uh, green chemical, excuse me. It's not a drink, Ethan doesn't drink it. Grab the antique coin, and then during this, we will use this opportunity to load up the enhanced handgun rounds. 
which will be used on the first boss fight. There's another little trick there where we uh, go ahead and uh, loosen the wing nut, tying that ox statuette onto that picture frame. And uh, while that animation is playing out, we will move the shelf, at which point we can proceed to grab the ox statuette. And it should still be in the first slot. I move the antique coin into the first slot, grab the other antique coin here because we need it for the um, scorpion key. This is also the only time that we're actually uh, picking up anything from the scorpion, or sorry, from the uh, from the cages. So I go over here in this hallway to trigger the appearance of the four-legged molded, which you normally don't encounter until much later. Then I go into that room to despawn the four-legged molded and grab the lockpick out of the box there. I would make a safety save in that uh, in that save room to the left over there. We'll move ourselves in here. Then we hit the third one, and then the last one on the right. While that animation is playing out, we'll uh, destroy the box and grab the handgun ammo. I want as much handgun ammo as I can get a hold of. Oh, also there's those double hits that I mentioned way earlier. This is why I like to uh, play it real safe. Make sure that I have enough health. I decided to go ahead and use my health my health here again, because sometimes they like to come out of their spawn animations and just uh, totally mess you up with the double hit thing. It only happens at frame rates above 60, but I always make sure that I'm at uh, full health before I dodge around one of the uh, standard molded. The four-legged molded there, you can actually kind of sneak up on him and uh, put one through his head. Switch out to regular handgun bullets to destroy that uh, crate over there. Running Resident Evil 7 at times is uh, not unlike an FPS. I suppose. But uh, we have the regular handgun bullets equipped for now. No, we have the enhanced bullets. It's uh, five bullets to get Jack to reveal his core. I picked up an extra herb there that I didn't need. I'm gonna wait for the chainsaw to rev up. And then after that, I'm gonna pull out the handgun again. One, two, three. Ah, oh, that took way, way, way more shots than I wanted. I actually messed up this fight pretty badly. And right about now, I should have definitely, definitely had the chainsaw equipped instead of the handgun, even though it gets him to reveal his core faster. Ooh, I almost got hit by the instant kill there. Definitely gonna need a lot of practice for this fight. But uh, it takes about two cycles after getting the chainsaw for Jack to die on Madhouse. But uh, if you use a long-range attack, then Jack will generally use his instant kill. I put my item, or my uh, slot, right there. What, what even was I doing? Grab this red chemical and the, uh... Oh, I almost didn't grab the red, the red chemical there. Just grab the regular handgun bullets. But I'm actually not supposed to have that many handgun bullets in my inventory. You can see that I rearranged my inventory for the express purpose of picking up dog heads and making sure that they land in the correct slots. You have to be very careful of that on Madhouse. Killing Jack here, uh... Causes uh, no more molded to spawn down here, with the exception of the one in the bathroom. I'm guessing it's the room that they use to like wash all the meat or something. 
But if we go far enough, then we actually won't have to uh, worry about him. He'll just, like, despawn. And lock the door out there. Then we move on. And there's Grandma. As of yet, unnamed Grandma. The game tries to throw you off the trail. If you actually hit her with uh, flame rounds, like if you fire a flame round near her, then the game actually crashes because she doesn't have a set HP value or a death animation. So the game just like out outright crashes there. While I'm unlocking the door, I move the item slot or the inventory cursor to the far right item slot which uh, keeps it over the uh, pendulum that I can use to get the final dog head. Also picking up the uh, broken shotgun because the uh, double barrel shotgun is actually the uh, best weapon to use. For the jack boss fight later, and also it results in a higher crit rate, so it's better for dealing with molded. After I pick that up, I'm going to put my cursor in the 12th slot, the last slot, so that, that way putting the dog heads in is really, really fast. And uh, now we are out of Mansion 1. You may be thinking, gosh, the player character runs so slow, but he actually runs a lot faster when you're outside. I go ahead and get this menu taken care of right now. I don't really think that there's a faster menu to do that with. By exiting and re-entering, you get the phone to ring. Also, high bonus items. We're gonna put away the scorpion key and the knife. We no longer need the scorpion key. You made it. You're the don't really need the knife for much anything box. either. So what but uh, we won't be returning to the what item box for a really long time. Yes, now listen carefully, Ethan. My family and I, our bodies are contaminated. I can't leave the property unless I get it out. And the same goes for Mia. They have no idea what they're infected with. We need the serum. It should clear whatever this stuff But Zoe knows that there is a serum. As long as you're not this detail gone. is highlighted in the DLC. All right. So where is it? If I knew where one was, I'd already be long gone. But I have a feeling my mother has hidden some inside the old house somewhere. So if we get this thing... I can help me and we can get out of here? Right. And so can I. The old house is near the water. You can't miss it. All right. I just hope you can handle my mother. Your mother? Be careful. They'll be looking for you. Man, some stuff is going down here. Get the handgun ammo out of that bird bath. And uh, we also get the grenade launcher early on Madhouse, which is a uh, very neat decision because you don't get the grenade launcher quite so early on uh, New Game Easy or New Game Normal. Changes up the route a lot. I'm gonna grab this uh, solid fuel and then we're gonna fire one well-placed grenade here to take out both of those beehives. Grab the stone statuette. The stone statuette should be in a pretty favorable position. Item slot should be, or item cursor should be right above it. I think. I don't know, it's been a while since I ran this game last. Also, that is my reaction to door to door salesmen. Is I just welcome them with a nice big glass of spiders. There's more uh, solid fuel in that cabinet. We'll open this. There you are. Ah. I avoid picking up the flamethrower because if I pick up the flamethrower, then the random drops from boxes will spawn more flamethrower fuel when I really want more handgun rounds and more shotgun rounds. Grab that stray flame round sitting there and uh, the two uh, health items. Fuck, fuck. 
Also, it's interesting how Japanese centipedes somehow managed to make it all the way to Louisiana. Those are actually Japanese mukade. They're actually very, very poisonous. Grab another solid fuel. Do a quick box check. I actually got an extra chemical fluid that I wasn't supposed to get there. Did I say poisonous again? God damn it. I meant venomous. Venomous. Mukade are quite venomous. But I was hoping that uh, it would either be a health potion, shotgun shells, or regular handgun bullets. I'm not sure. Am I supposed to have handgun bullets in my inventory at this point? I don't think so. We're going to take some damage here, but uh, we got to close the door here. In doing so, Marguerite will not follow us out. She doesn't follow us out here for some reason. Also, some colorful language. Best line in the entire game. Got the gunpowder, the crow key, and uh, you can see I picked up a hidden flame round to the left. We now have um, four flame rounds in our inventory. I could mix up more, but they actually eat up a lot of time to do so. We're going to load up uh, our enhanced handgun rounds. But if you don't have the flamethrower, then you can actually uh, crank that bridge earlier um, quickly. Sorry, I neglected to mention that. Oh wait, wasn't there a boss fight here that I should be talking about? Oh yeah, 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 so there's a boss fight here. We're going to fire off one flame round. Then just, uh, you know, two handgun bullets. And uh, that was actually perfect. Um, I think if I actually managed to hit her in the head, it would have only been two enhanced handgun bullets, but you just need a couple of body shots from the... Uh... That was rather obnoxious. I wasn't supposed to pick that up. You only need a couple of uh, body shots from the shotgun and then a few more uh, enhanced handgun bullet shots, and that mini boss is done. I'm just going to use this time to go touch that door and run back. And reload our guns. I think that's it. Well, did he find a serum? I just got done dealing with your mom and her fucking bugs. Wish you could have warned me. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not going to lie, the writing in this game is actually pretty good. But I did find out we need to make one. A D-series head and an arm. This can't be right. A head? Or shall we say... You do? I don't know about the arm, though. Have you searched the whole house? No, not yet. The Americanization of the script, as it were. All right. Check it out. Meet me at the trailer if you find it. I think that guy did a good job. I think he also worked on pure the fear Perseus mandate. So while we're waiting for uh, Marguerite to grab her lamp. We're going to mix up that health potion, that extra health potion we got. Then we're going to follow her in. I found a uh, strategy for Marguerite that uh, works pretty well after hours and hours and hours of practice. But there's a lot of stuff still that I feel like I could learn about the Marguerite fight. I think I actually lost time on the Marguerite fight in this particular run. We're just gonna grab items out of there, grab the chemical, and uh... I'm just uh... Oh, you know, don't mind me just actually losing time here. Because I think I actually accidentally picked up the wrong thing at that point. Normally I just mix items while waiting for Marguerite to go away because there's points during the fight where she's invincible. 
So during the first uh, section here, I uh, fire off a grenade and uh, fire off shotgun shells and fire off uh, handgun bullets. I fire another uh, handgun bullet to get her to come down here. Fire off one of these. And uh, that was just enough to get her to go away. Um, next I uh, grab the uh, strong medicine because I'm going to use a stripping agent on it to turn it into red chemical and get more uh, grenades for later. Basically what I do is like in between phases I just try to reload my gun and I just mag dump her every opportunity I get. As needed to be demonstrated. And generally I just try to pick up as many items as I need to as I go along. I try to pick up all the shotgun shells. But right about now, audio is actually very important because I need to listen for wherever she's gonna be. I believe this is uh, phase three. Whenever she uh, screams like that. Basically, I'm just trying to use every opportunity that I can to uh, bait her into coming out from hiding. Otherwise, she'll automatically come out and uh, try to uh, give birth to more bees. Pretty nasty boss fight, if I say so myself. And that's the final phase. At this point, uh, pretty much just mag dump her. I was kind of hoping that I could get shotgun shells from there. I'm trying to save at least one shotgun shell. Oh, I got really lucky. She was like right behind me. No way, she wasn't right behind me. Dang, I can't even remember how I played at this particular section. She was right in front of me when she dropped. That's why I made that dodge. Because her tracking is actually obscenely good with that attack. And whenever that happens, you know, you just duck. There we go. I finally got lucky. Also, I think my audio channels are swapped. Quick block. I think I let this go for more phases than I actually wanted it to go for. But I heard her running around upstairs, so... Okay, so my sound is coming in through the right channel. That's, that's why I was confused earlier. There she is. Yeah, I lost a lot of time on this fight, actually. Pretty sure this is not the strategy that I intended to use. Man, how was this time even at 143? I gotta go back and do a better run of this. Fucking stay dead, okay? Yeah, because I was actually supposed to be, like, all the way over here. I think, like, what happened, like, something that happened really early on in the boss fight threw me for a loop. And I couldn't do my usual strat, which is to, uh, which is to get the, uh, flame rounds early on. Opening this drawer will usually have a very high chance, like, 66% chance of a shotgun shell drop. Anecdotally speaking, it's 66%. I actually don't know the exact rate at which that drawer carries shotgun shells. It's kind of difficult to really pinpoint the percentage chance of anything being in a spot that has random item drops, whether it's crates or whether it's a drawer that you open up. But there's some, uh, there's some fixed drawers that you can open up. Like that drawer in front of us, for instance, there will either be one shotgun shell or several handgun bullets. I want shotgun shells, and the amount of shotgun shells that you actually get out of that 
even if you do get shotgun shells, it's kind of like not worth it, so. I just don't bother opening that drawer. Because it's like five seconds that I could save. We need to look for the lockpick up here, because the lockpick is going to be needed to mix up more uh, grenades later. Stay away. It's got that in common with Resident Evil 3. I actually like the uh, crafting system from Resident Evil 3, and I'm glad it kind of made an appearance. like a shrine to one of Evelyn's deceased sisters. This guy has full iframes, so we have to wait for him to uh, be done doing his little screamy thing. I probably shouldn't have waited so close to that because he actually could have immediately in one frame interrupted that and attacked me. That's a thing that they do an awful lot at unlocked frame rate. I close that door. I take a wide line and close that door behind me because I don't like... Uh, getting double hit by that guy. Generally three hits from any regular molded and you are dead, so I don't like to take risks where I can help it. So over here, we're not going to go into the trailer. Instead, we're just going to touch a corner of the trailer, which has part of the event trigger stretched out here. Jeez, was this the first time that I actually tried this trick? It must have been. Because I know I've done this trick like numerous times. So yeah, this must have been like an early, an early PB. Because there's some, there's some like actions that I'm doing that are like very questionable. Almost like they're my first time trying it. There's Grandma again. Hi, Grandma. A molded is going to pop out of the wall. And we're just going to use one shotgun shell to knock him back. And then close the door behind. Then we're going to, uh... Yeah... If I take a perfect 90 degree turn right here, then I can actually totally avoid getting hit by that molded. And I'll correct my line. Get out of there. Also go ahead and load those uh, enhanced handgun bullets to get them out of the inventory. Knock that guy out of the way again. It's a good thing I killed him there. I don't remember if he spawns there again or not. So then there's this guy. We're gonna bum. One other trick that I uh, haven't mentioned yet is uh, called reload cancelling, where you actually can use your uh, guard button to cancel out reloads and significantly uh, shorten the time of reloading. It's kind of like active reloading in Gears of War. Of course, if you do it at the wrong time, you're not going to have your ammo. There were some hidden shotgun shells next to that statue that I just manipulated. Shadow puzzles are pretty easy once you memorize the exact directions you're supposed to turn them. I don't actually remember the directions I'm supposed to turn them. It's all like muscle memory to me. I climb down here. There's not really a whole lot going on in this whole backtracky section. It's just Lucas being a dick.
grab this last backpack and this lockpick and whatever's in there. Fortunately, we got a drop for shotgun shells. I saw that there were shotgun shells in that cabinet that I just opened. So I just like ran right back. I have a feeling that maybe next time I should just like stand next to the cabinet while I'm opening it because I think that actually lets you pick it up early. There's more handgun bullets to the right. I try to grab as many handgun bullets as I can because I need them for mixing against Jack later. Once again, loading the uh, enhanced handgun bullets there. I, there's a possibility of taking a double hit on that molded there if he uh, does his one frame attack. Basically this BS one frame cancel that he likes to do. And uh, safety strat here. I just like to snipe these guys from afar because if you shoot them with a headshot from an enhanced handgun bullet while they're not aware of you, then their heads just explode instantly. I also like having handgun bullets for specifically taking out the traps in Lucas's area. There's another force cutscene we're supposed to sit through. I think the TV explodes if the game's data is not properly read. Because I think what is playing on the TV is like a video file. Like the game literally loads a video file to play on the TV. One other thing that's cool to note is uh, the game has an interlaced mode, like an interlaced video mode that uh, kind of blurs it up a little bit and makes it makes it look like a VCR, sort of like a VHS tape, but it also doubles the frame rate. Exactly how interlaced video works. I could explain the difference between interlaced and progressive video, but that's like something that only matters if you're getting into video editing, but I thought it was a neat touch that if you turn on interlaced mode, that the interlacing actually doubles your frame rate. That actually gives me an idea. Would that actually help with the uh, with the Mia fight if I turned on interlaced? Something worth checking out. My reaction exactly. So going up through here, we're just gonna just totally miss that tripwire. More handgun bullets. Crouch under here. Pop that. Shotgun shells. Gunpowder. Pop that. Handgun ammo. There's also a couple of trip wires that we can hit. Also, no, deleting the video that the TV plays would actually not be a valid strategy. That's um, altering the game's files. Fucking password, right? Hmm, why don't you try 0814? No! 0621. No, 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 it's 0514. Oh, come on! Take a chance, you never know. We are actually not going to listen to him at all. And instead we're going to use this opportunity to open this up and drop every item that we are not going to need. Well, I tried. Oh, 
gonna load up these enhanced rounds here and uh, get ready for four-legged molded. There's a lot of them. Gonna crouch under this. There's a four-legged molded that spawns right behind us and he's gonna be hot on our ass. So there's a neuro rounds directly to our right. We're gonna fire that, get neuro rounds. Fortunately, they're uh, kind of cooperating. If we get like right up on them and uh, aim at a very specific part of their hitbox, then they'll start jumping backwards and you actually won't have to keep shooting them. Even if you're out of ammo, it's uh, pretty handy for conserving ammo against these guys. Gonna load up the neuro rounds here. I uh, personally like to use neuro rounds on Madhouse specifically for the uh, fat molded and for uh, Mukade Jack. As he's called in the uh, Japanese version of the game, which is basically like, you know, big nasty Japanese centipede Jack. Take the two shotgun shells here. Try to get as many health items as we can, actually, because we gotta have enough to last us to the end of the game. So what I do here, whenever this opens up, pop off one, do a round. That actually could have gone a lot smoother. I have a feeling if I fired off one more handgun round. No, never mind. That actually would have killed it. So I'm holding guard over here so that we're still as close to the switch as we can. Whenever he starts fat man down, fat man down, that's when we can press the button. This is actually a pretty good opportunity to uh, be mixing up some more inventory slots or mixing up some more things in the inventory. I'm trying to position everything so that uh, I can put everything away with as few cursor movements as possible. There's the body of Clancy, by the way. While these stairs are lowering, we can run back and uh, grab this other uh, first aid chemical. As you can see, I uh, kind of messed up there. If you try to push 1408 before you go in through the door and try to skip the whole fat molded section, then it will actually not work. Have a nice day. Moving the slot to slot one, or the uh, cursor to slot one. I'm grabbing the uh, candle here. Kiss my ass. Ethan, language. There are children in the building. Somewhere. I think. I'm not sure anymore. So the solution to this is loser. We're not actually supposed to know this unless we do the videotape with Clancy. But this is how we're supposed to survive. Shoes. 
So if we sit over here, we actually will not be affected by the blast of the bomb. Me guarding here is just to be funny. I guess I kind of ruined the joke. So now we're going to grab pretty much everything that we put away, save for the uh, snake key. We're going to use the crank here. Got to make sure that we have the shotgun ready. We have just barely enough shotgun shells for Jack. Not much of a surplus of handgun rounds to go off of. But we're about to get a pretty decent chunk more. Go ahead and decapitate that guy because he'll actually be right up our asses if we don't. Another four-legged molded is going to jump out of the water, but we have to actually wait for him to be vulnerable because he has iframes here. When he jumps back, he does not. And there's this guy, and that was the one-frame attack that I was talking about. We were pretty lucky to not get hit by it up to this point. I go ahead and use the uh, lockpick pretty early on. and uh, go to grab the other items. We're going to be mixing up a lot of items really fast while Zoe is mixing up the serum. Not now. We don't have the time. Do you have both ingredients? Right here. This should be enough, right? If we make them fast enough, my father and Lucas aren't far away. He's coming. Daddy's coming. Good. There's enough for two. We don't have much in the way of enhanced handgun bullets. But we're going to mix up two neuro rounds, load the neuro rounds into the grenade launcher, make sure the shotgun is completely loaded, and load up the enhanced handgun bullets. Hey, one of those is mine. Obviously, I open up the fight by popping off a neuro round on his uh, eye at the bottom. If I uh, miss one of my shotgun shells, then I follow it up with an enhanced handgun bullet. I try to slow down my uh, shots a little bit just to make sure that I'm actually going to hit it. I save the uh, second neuro round for Jack's final phase. I actually got pretty lucky with the aggravated damage from the flame round there, because that actually knocked him into the water, as you can see. But the ideal is to take him down during one phase while he's on the ground. He has to climb up on the rafters pretty much no matter what at least once, because that's how we're going to hit him on his eye on the bottom. And I missed a... I missed a uh, flame round, shamefully. I'm starting to think that actually maybe picking up a uh, stabilizer would be best. Because then we can keep reloading the shotgun as quickly as possible. 
truth of the matter is, there's actually a lot of coins that I could have picked up earlier in order to facilitate picking that up. Should have taken advantage of it, actually. But now we've taken out all the eyes, so... I'm gonna load the neuro rounds in, make sure the shotgun is equipped. I should have made sure that the enhanced handgun bullets were equipped, but mess that up. We gotta hit him in the eye with the neuro round. I'm actually supposed to have a lot more enhanced handgun bullets for that. Maybe like 10. That would have saved me a clip. It actually would have saved me a cycle here. Ethan's going to get a full health recharge in a second, so there's no reason to heal. Ethan, this way. Are you all right? Yeah. Come on, Mia's waiting for us. He had to use one serum to save himself. How unfortunate. I had to use one of them. There's only one left. There's only one left. There can't just be one left. What the hell are we gonna do now? The serum actually doesn't work. <gasps> it's fine. It was foolish thinking I could escape. But Zoe... Go! Both of you just go! But you're supposed to select Mia, because... I'm, I'm if sure you don't, then you Evelyn will just straight up kill Zoe. Apparently I belong. And then you'll have oh, to fight Mia out. again later. There won't be anyone left to help. I hope the Zoe DLC does Zoe some justice. Also, this selection is pretty much the single most pointless selection. The single most pointless choice that Capcom has ever presented a player that they want the player to think they have a choice in the matter. Ethan? Thank you. But in doing so, it actually does reveal a little bit more of the storyline for more astute players. The thing about Resident Evil 7 is Resident Evil 7 is very heavy on lore, so we need to talk. the plot is very confusing to many people. Us, didn't you? Look, I just want to know the truth. Ethan, I honestly don't remember. Try. Also, we're coming up on pretty much the worst part of the game, by the way. You're okay. What the hell was that? What the fuck? I actually think this part would have sucked a lot less if you could skip the videotape sequence, but you can't. When you die in the video game sequence, You die outside of the videotape sequence. Dude. Dude. If you die in the tape, you die in real life. Ethan? Oh. 
Then... <clears throat> so this whole ship, uh, yeah, Evelyn wrecked it. So now the main villain of the game is Evelyn. And, uh, I don't know, the game kinda goes downhill from here, just a little bit. I think Not a Hero is actually gonna do it some justice. This is mostly just a uh, forced cutscene here. Moving to slot two during this cutscene. angling ourselves up, we can just drop straight down. The reason I move it to slot 2 is so that whenever I pick up the fuse, I can just go ahead and put it down, open the door immediately. I don't actually know how Mia has amnesia up to this point, but Evelyn pretty much brainwashes her over a long period of time, which basically means that it's like pretty much almost completely overwritten her conscious thought. spawn here. Sometimes he'll uh, do the one frame thing and hit you. Once again, pretty nasty when it happens. We're going to try and uh, go as fast as we can. Grabbing both of those uh, bombs over there. Those will actually come in real handy. They are paramount to not dying. Especially since we don't have the Albert 01 and infinite ammo in the box. What? What? Why? Alan, you're getting worse. So we have to wait for this whole sequence to be done before we can start moving. Too far gone anyway. But it serves me right. It's 
It's my fault she got out. Yeah, it is your fault. But that Apparently Evelyn wasn't taking her medicine. She didn't attack you? It's part of her imprinting protocol. I can't believe this is happening. Here, take it. So Evelyn's imprinting protocol basically means that she designates anyone okay, Evie. that is she's Where supposed to be imprinted to as like her family. And basically Evelyn thinks that Mia is her mother. She's close. It's actually part of Evelyn's programming, which slowly deteriorates obviously as it goes on. Damn. I'll have to reset. There's a herb in there. Try to pick up as many health vomiting. items as possible. Far more in excess of her body mass. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> We're going to be seeing a lot more of her ugly friends if this keeps up. <laughs> All right. We need to find her and fast. This is getting out of hand. Agreed. But basically... I believe that uh, Tensu Corporation actually intended for Evelyn to get out on the ship so that they could test Evelyn for combat data because most of the supplementary material that you find in Lucas's lab doesn't actually talk about what happens if Evelyn, Evelyn being the first E-series bioweapon, gets out into a battlefield type situation. So that's basically the entire plot of Resident Evil 7, is that Lucas is uh, pretty much, that Lucas is pretty much collecting uh, combat data for Tensu Corporation. Oh wow, that cross-up. I never even expected that cross-up could happen in a first-person game like that. We're gonna grab those bombs there. And uh, if we go far enough ahead, then the uh, blade arm molded will actually despawn. That was an attack that I wish didn't happen. But I'm actually really happy that I was able to squeeze around that guy. As you can see, that molded just straight up hit me twice. That's not a madhouse thing, that's a 180 FPS thing. I grab that chemical fluid there so that I can mix up more health. Then grab a corrosive. Try to make sure I'm at full health because I'm not mad. Wait, what did you call me? I don't. I don't want bad luck things to happen. I want a house, and I want you to be my mom. You move as far around the back of that thing until Mia raises her left wrist, and then you go out the door. When she raises her left wrist, that's the trigger to get Evelyn to appear toward the exit of that room. So a couple of baddies are going to spawn at the top of these steps here. We're just going to kind of go at a 45 degree angle up the stairs. And of course, we're going to get hit by one as it just turns around really rapidly. the machine gun against the first molded and then I use two more bombs to kill the other two molded. Also good job Moobly, you fucking got me. Moobly wins Moobly wins the joke this stream. I genuinely thought that there was a booger hanging out of my nose. GG. Ready? 
emergency safety lockdown system has been engaged. I equip the knife here because it's fastest to guard with the knife. I actually need to guard to get around that one. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as dangerous areas in the videotape go. There's none left. Now all that is left is we sit through a cutscene. How did you get here? Where's Evie? She's out of control. Without the treatments, she's deteriorating. Well, it's a good thing we're already dying. <laughs> Don't say that. She trusts you. That little bitch, she never trusts me. Okay, wait. Evie, no, Evie, Evie. Ellen, listen. I didn't mean to call you that. She's Evie. trying to take to, control. To... You have to fight her. It's kind of difficult to tell whether Mia is like a director, a bioweapons handler, Ellen, or a scientist. Touched Ellen, that's how she got infected. You messed up, Mia. If you want, you can go check the laptop and get the cutscene that you see at the very beginning of the game. But instead, we're just going to have some dude explode in front of us. This is also the only skippable cutscene in the entire game. I kind of wish there were more full motion video cutscenes for that very reason. And you remember? Yes, Evelyn. I remember. Can we be a family like before? No, Evie. We can't be a family. We were never a family. We will never be a family. Then I don't need you anymore. <laughs> that jump scare. Try to make sure I'm angled as far left as I can on that uh, cutscene there, so that that way it's minimal turning to get to opening that door. Climb up this ladder here. In order to get the uh, lug wrench. We won't be picking up any more guns. The only thing that we have to save us is explosives. Good old high explosives. So we have to run straight through this guy. 
He actually backs up just enough whenever he starts to vomit that we can just go straight to the save room and despawn him. I go to second floor first for pretty much that reason. Because if I try to go first floor first, then we'll have to like drop behind another uh, another two-legged molded. Going into the quote-unquote save room there despawns the four-legged molded near the fuse here. When we try to go back towards the elevator that we just came out of, he's going to spawn again. Doing that, as you can see, causes the molded to, to despawn again. So we'll climb up, back into the elevator, use the fuse, not yet, just kidding. We have to go to the medical bay. blow that one up because he's actually going to be a pain in the ass whenever I get back. We still have one bomb. this hit, grab the cable, and uh, meanwhile that guy is vomiting through the wall, he actually can't hit you. I'm guessing that whatever's going on with the wall and that collision and that glitchy looking vomit is just eating up the damage frames. No idea how it's working, but it worked. And with that we have everything we need to get the elevator working and to get our asses off this ship. Keep the bomb here for killing the four-legged molded as it pops up. Also like to grab that uh, health potion just in case. Because I was on such good pace I decided to go back and grab the remote bomb here. Oh jeez. Rightfully so. It's a good thing that I grabbed all those health items. Because he hit me like three times that could have actually been disastrous. It takes two bombs to actually deplete the molded's maximum health. And also I was hoping that the fat molded there would vomit instead of body blow me. Because if he body blows me, then it will put him directly on a course to block me from finishing this area. But if he pukes, then it locks his trajectory in one place and I can just run right around him. Ethan. Also, if you were paying attention, you could see the cut on Ethan's cheek from where Jack jabbed a knife in him earlier. Hey, shh, shh. I know, I know, I know. I'm not gonna hurt you. Hell, I never would have if I could have helped you. But what do you mean? I'm no killer, son. Neither is Marguerite. No more boy, Lucas. That's what you think, Jack. Or even Zoe here. The truth of the matter is, if you read Luke, if you were paying attention and you read Lucas's diary earlier, you could actually see that Lucas is was quite the budding psychopath growing up. Lucas, as a matter of fact, killed his best friend. Everything changed after that. So she infects you, and then she takes control. No. It could be implied that he either hid the body or. Marguerite or Jack just, actually helped dispose of the body. She forces away but out of the entire mind. Baker family, Lucas no. is the only one who is indeed a psychopath. You are connected to her. And would be very, very you easy for Tensu to. to persuade to get to do their oh, dirty work. You're a, you're a different person now. 
So Mia sent me that message because of Evelyn. Listen, the girl just wants a family of her own. Also, there's this whole hive mind experience. The key. Right. But it could just as easily you be a fever her. dream. You stop her. Ethan. But basically, Lucas is pretending to be Not under that. Evelyn's control the whole time. Please. But he actually doesn't suffer any of the hallucinations that the other bakers suffer. Nor is he under yeah, Evelyn's yeah, control. God damn, the lip on that little girl. There's no time. You have to get out of here and find her. Here, take this. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? Be able to resist for much longer. No. Now go kill that little bitch. No. No. Mia! No! Truthfully, Ethan could have been killed by Evelyn at any time. But the only reason that Evelyn does not kill Ethan. is because Ethan is supposed to be Evelyn's, or sorry, even as Ethan is supposed to be Mia's husband. And so Evelyn thinks that Ethan would be a good daddy. The Baker family is merely a surrogate for what she actually wants, which is Ethan and Mia. Also, there's a lot of dead fish here. There's a helicopter flying overhead. But Ethan being infected pretty much the whole time, as Ethan's hallucinations get more vivid and vivid and vivid, he is becoming more and more under Evelyn's control. And some people with weaker constitution immediately just become molded whenever they are infected by the mutamycete. So grabbing a few items, grabbing pretty much everything we dropped. Ah, uh, yeah, that was that was kind of an accident. I, I actually did not want to drop that first aid. Checking our guns to make sure we're fully stocked up. We actually don't need too terribly many uh, shotgun shells. Actually, that's a lie. We do took a wide line to make sure that I didn't get like instant hit by that one. Oh jeez, those guys were really close. Making sure that I have the uh, enhanced handgun bullets already loaded up, freeing up inventory space because we actually do need to free up quite a bit of inventory space up to this point. couple of pretty neat strats for the rest of the game, including a total pog champ moment, because you can actually skip the two fat molded at the end. So while these guys are spawning, we just try to stay away from them as much as possible. Otherwise, they'll just spin right towards us and hit us. And I try to take a straight a line as I can and just run as perpendicular to this as I can because we want to be able to hit this event trigger as quickly as we can. In doing so, we will actually plow over these molded, kill them instantly. Of course, this guy, these guys, 
were not being particularly nice. So we had to use the shotgun to get them out of the way. And we're gonna, then we're going to grab a few final items. Gunpowder, steroids, and herb just in case. The uh, supplement there. While this is opening, I'm actually going to uh, move over to the uh, to the uh, E series tissue sample. Grab the shotgun shells. And then while we're waiting for uh, Evelyn for the uh, E series necrotoxin to come out, we're going to go ahead and mix up the um, we're going to go ahead and mix up the uh, the, the what you call it the neuro rounds. Because we need, uh, we need at least two neuro rounds. There was a uh, third neuro round that I picked up that I could use in case of an emergency against the um, four-legged molded when they pop up. In case I miss it, because a neuro round does kill a four-legged molded in one shot, or as a backup strat. Actually, that's. What I prefer to save that extra uh, neuro round for. I got one frame by that molded as it was coming out. It just like completely cancelled its own spawn animation just to hit me. <laughs> Personally, I think it's a colossal dick move by the developers that they can even do that. Was lucky enough to kill that guy instantly. Good crit rate. And grab some more health items just in case. Pop that guy. Reload cancel here, pop him, we did it. While that guy is spawning in, we can actually move around him, and then we decapitate the one on the right and completely avoid his friend. Hopefully that guy isn't charging when he's going down the stairs here, and he did not, so now we get to just crouch and push out of the way. I actually thought that I was gonna mess this up. Once it drops down, then all the enemies behind us despawn, at which point we can uh, determine whether the second fat molded is going to come out behind us or in front of us. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to group these guys together and group successful. Grouping successful. So you can see that I uh, shot a neuro around and uh, used the handgun to take out the uh, tripwires. At which point I can actually reset their stun timer whenever I fire another neuro round. I was uh, a little worried that that second neuro round wouldn't hit both of them. It's supposed to hit both of them. If I reloaded and shot again, then I wouldn't have been able to climb up before their stun timers were finished. But right now I'm preparing for the uh, final fight with Evelyn. Loading up the flame rounds. I only need two shotgun shells. Actually, that's a lie. I need a lot more. I probably only need two shotgun shells, don't I? I think so, actually. Never mind. completely ignore all these creepy dolls. You could see more and more vivid hallucinations. Basically, Ethan is just getting closer and closer to losing it, so he has to kill Evelyn right now. And he's just like kind of working through the hallucination to be able to uh, jab the uh, thing into Evelyn. But anyway, I strafe to the left right there at the right time, which allows me to close the gap 
and inject the serum into Evelyn. Pretty sure that uh, flashing there is Evelyn starting to lose control over her ability to cause Ethan to have hallucinations. Now you can see that the grandmother was Evelyn the whole time. Grabbing the shotgun shells and the enhanced handgun bullets. Her uh, HP pool starts now. Then we're just gonna mag dump her. One flame, two shotgun shells, and like 10 handgun bullets is enough to pass over to the next uh, phase of the boss. Boss, quote unquote, it's not really much of a boss. Nearly as much as it is, don't die. Man, visiting grandma is always the worst. So while we're waiting for uh, the section of the boss fight where we can actually do damage, we're just gonna go ahead and reload our guns. After the second hit, when she says, that's when we start mashing fire. It's just a grenade round and uh, two handgun bullets to drop and be able to pick up the Albert. At which point, you gotta start making the cursor follow her head hitbox. And try not to hit any of the tentacles. And as long as all the shots land on her head, you're doing it optimally. I hit a tentacle there, so that was a five shot. I actually have to wonder why the Albert handgun isn't even an option in the speedrun. Who knows, maybe the bonus item that we get for completing Not a Hero will be the uh, Albert handgun. But anyways, that's time. The game timer stops when this final cutscene plays. Totally skippable, but the game timer does stop there. I just like to let the ending play whenever I get a new PB. I'm Redfield. Glad we found you. Uh, the fuck took you guys so long? So now that uh, Evelyn is dead, it's questionable whether they're not infected anymore or not. They say that when one door closes, another opens. Well, a door closed tonight. And what a long night it was. But not just for me. Me and I weren't the only victims here. So were the Bakers. It was that thing, Evelyn, who made them that way. 
But now Evelyn's dead. And these guys are here to clean up the mess. I had just come to terms with losing Mia. But now she's back and wants to start over. Put all this behind us. Maybe this is where the next door opens. Have you told Aunt Rhody today? You can actually see some uh, interesting supplemental material, like a sales pitch for the E-Series bioweapons if you read these uh, newspapers. Who's the dude in that picture, I wonder? But yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, there's still a lot of places that I could definitely gain time, most of it on boss fights. But I guess I got really tired of getting double hit a bunch while trying to complete runs. They crossed out her face. That's how you know she's dead. But, uh, yeah. So, that seemed to... I don't really have, uh, much else to say, except for, like... Nah. Nah. Just wisecracking some of the credits, I guess. But uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy what you see, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell, etc., etc. Also, please check out my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I stream there full time. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll get me to pick for boogers that don't exist. Or if you feel like financially supporting my content or whatever, you could subscribe to me there. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Or you could smash the sub button and your dick will fall off. One or the other.
But with that, I should hopefully be uploading an improvement to this before the end of the year. I will definitely be streaming the next series of DLC, the next long-awaited series of DLC whenever it pops up. The end of Zoe DLC and the uh, Not a Hero DLC, now that it's finally been given a release date, December 12th. I'm actually very much looking forward to it. Also, this stream was recorded in front of a live studio audience at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. Say hi to YouTube chat. Also, I'm just kidding. If you sub to my stream, your dick will actually not fall off. It will actually grow so long that you will be known throughout all the land as the pirate with three legs. Yeah, no, I'm seriously just filling this in. In the uh, actual GDQ run, I will actually be skipping the credits altogether so that we can see the final time. Disclaimer, I'm actually very, very, very good at not swearing. I'm just pandering. Please don't kill me. I guess I'll just fill in the rest of the uh, three minutes here that I'm just kind of sitting here with a bit of Q&A. 
Is this your PB, or did you select it for commentary for a different reason? This is my PB. I've had it for about seven months or so. I don't know. I haven't checked speedrun.com to see when I actually submitted this, but... It is uh, currently the second place time in the world for New Game Madhouse. The first being done by a player named Jigsaw Killer. I hope that more people play New Game Madhouse because I'm not really sure that I can think of any faster routes for this at the moment. Who knows, maybe if I go back to trying for world record attempts, it might actually work itself out. Wow, it's really weird that they'd uh, post a sales pitch for a biological weapon in a Louisiana newspaper. Don't you guys agree? But that's it then. Final time, 143.21. No resets. 15 healing items used. I wish I could use fewer, but it's really tough to dodge around enemies and expect to not get hit. What was that noise? Must have been steam or something. No idea what that is. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching, and uh, see you again next commentary.